Uh, what do you think about uh, decentralized oracles, and in particular, what are your opinion on uh, provably fair oracles? All right, that's that's a tough one. Um, there's a reason why the fundamental trust model that operates through consensus works on the transactions and tokens that are on chain best. And that is because it can validate, and those are validated on chain best in a decentralized way. One of the problems with trying to validate externalities that are, by definition, external, um, is that you may have problems with maintaining consistency uh, of the of the historical perspective of those externalities. Let me give you an example. Let's say you've got a smart contract that says, I will pay farmers in Italy if during three days uh, in December the temperature remains below zero Celsius for three days. Uh, we call that a frost event. And if a frost event happens, right, great. Um, where are you going to get those temperatures from? And how are you going to get Bob? Hmm? Bob. The open blockchain. <laughs> well, the problem is that the miners who are validating the consensus rules do not have thermometers in Milan, so they cannot validate that consensus rule. Also, depending on whether the thermometer is high or low, here or there, inside or outside, shielded or not, it will give you a slightly different reading, because you are now talking about a real world, right, variable that is measurable to a certain degree of accuracy within a certain uh, statistical error. So the temperature is x plus or minus 2 degrees to within 3% statistical variation just on one thermometer. So then the question is if you say I'm going to take that from one oracle then you've centralized. If you say I'm going to take it for three oracles what happens when they disagree? And two of them detect a frost event, and one doesn't. And how do you reconcile the chain? This is not an easy problem to solve. Yes. What we do is that we try. I've used Oracle Eyes. Yes. That's great. That's great. Yes. And we try to provide a proof. Microphone. Yes. Okay. So maybe I can take Yeah. Basically, we try to provide a cryptographic proof that we are not lying. And that's the best that uh, right now you could have on a, on a, decent, on a decentralized uh, blockchain. Right. Maybe another stage would be to uh, have some type of collateral, so that if we lie, we lose some type of money. That's very good. So I think there are events upon which you can make that kind of determination, and there are events upon which you cannot make that type of determination, right? Um, so you know, people give various examples. Like, okay, what if uh, Milan FC wins this game this Saturday? What if we put a bet on who's going to win the next presidential election or whatever? And most people assume, yeah, those events, you know, they either happen or they don't. Well, that's not how our election went in 2000. We waited 29 days to find out who the president was, and then we delegated it to nine miners. Let's call them. <laughs> who arrived at consensus 5-4 and gave us George Bush. Right? And, and so there are very few um, real-world facts that can be quantified with certainty across all observers that are actually useful in any form of, con uh, of any commerce, because they, the very events that you're trying to measure are the events that introduce uncertainty in commerce, and those events are the hardest to arrive at consensus of measurement. Like if I had a smart contract that said, well, how many atoms is in a molecule of carbon? <laughs> yes, okay, well, we can answer that for certain parameters of answering that, but that's not useful because if everybody can answer it, why do you need an oracle, right? Um, and for the things that are really useful, you can't answer it in a definitive way at the right time. I can't tell you if Milan FC won. Uh, there's still a dispute, and the experts are going over the videos, and the referee said they won, but then FIFA is now appealing the decision, and who the hell knows, right? The election is uncertain. The um, whether a company went. People actually said for a few days after Lehman that it wasn't technically quite bankrupt yet. Um, the people who said that were the people who had the insurance contracts to pay out because Lehman was bankrupt, <laughs> and they didn't want to. So even facts like that.
cannot be easily adjudicated. So the question is, how useful are oracles if by oracle you simply mean put trust in one company that is, through collateral or cryptographic signing, putting their stake behind that? Um, and that is only useful up to the level that you can stake, which again limits its applicability. I think it's a really interesting uh, thing that will develop a lot over the next couple of decades, but it's it's a very hard problem. So thank you for trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.